set this up. Do, do, do. Right. Thursday. It's home free. That's the feeling on Thursday. Wednesday is like a little precursor to that home free feeling. Thursday definitely is. Friday's the day that you, you tell yourself it's okay to eat uh, lunch out <laughs> and that you don't have to have a salad and then you're going to drink a bunch of beers when you get home. That's Thursday you're telling all yourself about this stuff on Friday. This week just felt like you went by so fast. Well, the weekend, the last two weekends have been pretty busy, too. Like we had uh, parties on the Sundays, both of them. One of them was, uh, just got his little friend Maria had a birthday party with a bounce, bounce house and games at um, Tucker's and at a taco cart and we stayed for a really long time, too. We stayed even after what the technically uh, end of the of the party was. But um, they had a great time. Excuse me. Especially Oakley kept trying to go into the bounty house. She's much more uh, fearless than Skylar is. And then last Sunday, a few days ago, we had, uh, like, opening season um, potluck get together at um, at Stowe Park and we stayed that until you know until pretty much the bitter end when people were cleaning up by the time we started to leave and uh, and then I woke up and I brought Hollister with me to the to the office at like and I think we got there at like 515 and I worked that day and then I went home and I went yogging at the beach and then I went back and then I went to practice by 2 o'clock and was home by like 4-ish gosh and then I forgot we had seen my aunts and uncle which we hadn't seen since before the pandy wandy and so we saw them Sunday before we went to the little potluck, and then, then we went back on Monday night to uh, eat with my folks and my aunts and uncles, burgers and dogs at their house, and my brother and his family showed up a little bit later, and so we didn't start eating, and we didn't go to bed until we didn't get home until uh, close to eight, and uh, yeah, I remember that being a and the next day, Tuesday, I worked, and then we had a match, we had our opening match, and I actually went and watched all three of them, so I was at the gym from 4 o'clock until, until about 8.30, and then I went home, and everybody was asleep. And so I thought this would be a good time to go for a run. Instead of waking my wife up and telling her. Because I knew she would just be upset and say no. Um, and she ended up being upset anyways. Um, but I only got to run like two miles. So that got me in the doghouse for a little bit. And then I ate some food. And then I went to bed and then got up again in the morning and that was the first day of school for Skylar in first grade and so I took Oakley and then went to work and then Melissa took Skylar took her to work and then I worked until about 2 then I went to volleyball practice and we had to go back back home and then we all went to go pick up Skylar from after day school care on the first day so we could see what it was going to be like and then then we got back home and we ate the 
salmon cakes instead of crab cakes they're salmon cakes and I think that's what's been making my me have the bubble guts all day I didn't vomit or anything but I shat like three times and it was liquidy all three times or it could have just been all the cheese and crackers and salami I've been eating I don't know but I had a salad every day this week and then a salad Tuesday night and last night also. And at every dinner now that I think about it. So I have four salads during the day and four salads at night. Maybe all that vegetables has just made my insides. One big diarrhea milkshake. <laughs> So anyways, and then got to this morning and I dropped Ugly off and worked eight hours and now I'm going to go pick her up, but that's how fast this week went and the team is going to Valencia today and return tomorrow and I'm, I'm not going to go. I want to, but I have to, I have to choose wisely. Oh, and I went and got fingerprinted today, too. But other than that, it was a pretty pretty low-key day at work. But I just feel so... I just feel so, uh... A little bit, a little bit tired. But more so... My stomach feels a little bubbly. And... I moved some books around the night that I went jogging without asking. Oh, and I went jogging last night, too, to, like, six laps around my my block or so, uh, the El Encanto block, which I figured out was just about a mile. You just have to go up a lot, um, but it's not so bad. But, yeah, well, I didn't even go to bed till midnight last night, and then I was up every couple hours, because... Hollister and Oakley were fussy. I think that's why I'm tired. Is because I gosh, going running at night is I've not been able to not eat afterwards, and it's I'm not able to run as far. But I have been able to work more hours during the day, so I just gotta suck it up and go at night. And you know what? I did two miles of the night, and it felt lame but it still was two miles that I got that and then last night I did six and as I was starting out it was feeling not super great but by the time I got to like uh, three and three quarters like four I felt like I could go longer I definitely got the five and I pushed for the six but then I think I had to go pee or take a dump or something but it's the motivation is just so so hard to to bolster all late at night because you've had all day on your feet or sitting down and you've got the whole all of the food that you ate all day just still processing and I th your mind's just tired too. But when I go first thing in the morning or or uh, like I hit the just go before I eat anything and I get out there the good thing about running at the beach is as long as I can get all the way all the way out there's no choice I have to run back I'm not gonna walk so it's easier to push but around my neighborhood I guess it's more different but it's just at night uh, I can't wait until all three of them sleep through the night and then I can go running at 4 o'clock in the morning come back and shower and be done with that and then I can help with everybody doing uh, getting ready for the day and whatnot but let's see what's that going to be it will kind of happen Oakley was definitely like a year old so that's a while that's a ways off Anyways, but tomorrow's Friday. This 
actually nice today not to have practice and tomorrow not to have practice and then have the weekend off too although I feel guilty I should be doing something with the boys right now but it also sounds like a lot of them are all playing sand volleyball and uh, none of them really came up and talked to me at the gym last night so I don't feel so bad and also it's rightfully so I I don't think I would come and talk to me either. I'm not a very um, motivating leader, and I don't. I'm not charismatic, and I don't. I don't know. I just feel like I'm invisible a lot, and it's not their fault. I think I'm just so low key that I don't. I don't toot my horn enough that I don't stand out enough and garner that that type of attention, which is is fine. It is fine because because I we've we've won Channel League twice and uh, I'm proud of that and I don't think it's just because I had the best players those years I think I got the best play out of those players those years. I think the other schools were talented too but also uh, we were able I was able to help the girls side get one in 2019 too and I'm super proud of that one also especially as far down the tubes as as the varsity program went which I can I can I can attribute I, and because I saw it and I've been here all the all the while the whole time and it was unfortunately a deep it was we were sliding in 2014 in Garrett's last year and uh, that was sad because we did have so much talent that year but either they were they were over it or they just didn't have they just could never turn the corner competitively it seemed like and it seemed like they were more it seemed like they were more competitive when they were sophomores and they had something to prove. Or maybe when they were juniors, but I mean, senior year they should have been dominating and it wasn't because of the setting. Not when you have two outsides that are great athletes and that legit of volleyball players. They should have been they should have been able to uh, they should have been able That was kind of disappointing. And then, gosh, I want to say, say 2015 was, uh, I think they won like five games. And I just think there was such a such a drop off in talent and then the new coaching coming in. And uh, it seemed like the culture changed. And the following year, I think they did a little bit better, but still maybe 500 and we didn't make play outside of the year. I think we got like fourth two years in a row or we or we might have even gotten fifth because one of those years been terrible. One. Won Chan League and then they won CIF because they had um, Aubrey and uh, Slater. What was their first name? I forget. They were good though. They won the TOC too that year. Pretty legit. And they had a freshman center. That was a good team. Um, and then 2017, when when Megan took over, I thought the just uh, the characteristics of the program were returning, and the love was turning, and Rue was returning, and the girls were they really like they really liked her, and they still do. And um, they got third that year and went to the playoffs, and I believe got bounced in the first or the second round and then 2018 also got second and then bounced in the third round and then 2019 was when we I think we tied we tied for first but still it was the first time we had won channel league or tied since um 2013 maybe 2012, 2011, 
Whatever Taylor and Tristan were seniors, that's the year they won. And then they went to the semis. And that was a badass game, so we got blown out in the first and third set. But, yeah, we, we had a good... We had a good starting match. Good starting match last on Tuesday. And uh, God, I was just so jacked up. It was, I hadn't coached in in months, and just the program, the girls' program, hadn't played in months. And, I mean, sorry, in years. We won, and I was so jacked up. I wanted to go for a run, but I was impatient. So I just spun the dial and tried to go running and come back before before wifey was going to wake up but I knew that wasn't going to happen and I knew I wasn't going to run a mile and then come back inside check everything and then go back out uh, that would have taken too much patience no 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 so I got well, I don't know one and a half miles through and then she texted me <laughs> and then I texted her back saying, oh, I'm just around, I'm just down the street, need me to come back. She didn't text back till I was like stepping in the door and she said, no, but no really meant yes. So I went back in and then, yeah, that night I, I was just like cleared out some books and tried to clean out the garage, which she's been talking about, she's been talking about, uh, like organizing but by the time we get the girls to bed, and then, like, I go on a run or I'll, like, fall asleep, but it's, it's difficult. It's, there's, the days that we've been, we've been, uh, we've been just doing a lot having kids. But we're not even doing a lot, but it's just entertaining them, really. That's probably my fault as a parent of not taking them out more younger so that they become more passionate about things than just being homebodies. But it's like, I've always, I always just kind of wondered also, like, I've always kind of enjoyed being home and relaxing and feeling like I wasn't having to not like cater to anybody, but um, what's the, what's the way? what am I trying to say? Like do what was expected of me. Mm, staying home and relaxing and watching TV is just frowned upon by so many people like a waste of your existence. And if you're only going to live one time and you're going to die eventually, I understand. It, it does seem like a waste, but is it not our choice to either make that waste or not? And then why do you feel guilty when you hear about people going on trips to Australia and you wish you could do that, but you you don't feel like you're able to say, I, that's, that's cool, I don't want to do that. Because who wouldn't want to go to another country? And I guess if you answer, I wouldn't, then... It makes you seem ungrateful for the world that's around you. Mm, and I guess they wouldn't have made the world so big if, if you weren't supposed to go explore all of it. Ooh, yeah. And I guess I, I guess I just don't want, I guess I don't want my kids to be like me I want because I want to live vicariously through them and them wanting to travel and do fun stuff I don't know if that's true either and then I guess just working and then going home and watching TV is I guess it's boring I like it though, because it's low stress, but maybe we need to be stressed out more. I don't think I've even taken my children on a vacation ever. I'm trying to think. 